The vehicle will come with three keys on the keyring. All three keys have a different use. The first key is the black flip-out key. This operates the central locking and is used to start the vehicle. The second key is the red key. This operates the door locks should you wish to lock the doors of the vehicle when you are using the machine to ensure everything inside the cab remains secure. Do not use this key in the fuel cap or in the ignition. The third key is the small silver 455 key. This operates the machine and goes into the key switch located at the ground controls on the driver's side. Unlock the vehicle and get into the driver's seat. Adjust it to a comfortable position. Switch on the ignition using the Iveco flip-out key fob. Once the ignition has powered on, turn the ignition key and start the engine. If required, turn on the flashing beacons. The flashing beacon switch is located below the heater controls. The handbrake must be applied to engage the PTO. Our vehicles come with two variations of handbrake. The first is the traditional manual handbrake lever. The second is an electronic handbrake switch, which is located on the dashboard next to the gear stick. To apply the handbrake, pull the switch towards you with the vehicle parked and foot brake applied. To disengage the handbrake, hold the foot brake on and push the switch downwards. Apply the clutch pedal fully. Ensure it is pushed all the way down. By your right knee are the PTO controls, keeping the clutch pressed down. Push the green button and wait for the orange light to come on. Once the orange light comes on, release the green button. Release the clutch. The RPM will increase on the vehicle as you release the clutch, and the engine tone may change. It is good practice to turn off the radio and heaters whilst using the MEWP. This will extend the life of the battery whilst the engine is off. Close the driver's and passenger doors and double check they are closed fully. The outrigger controls do not work if a door is left ajar. Walk towards the middle of the vehicle on the driver's side and locate the ground control box. Take the 455 key with you. Insert the 455 key into the key switch located next to the red emergency stop button and turn the key to the right to select outrigger controls. Pause the video here and locate the outrigger controls on the passenger side. The four levers on the left activate the legs up and down. The two levers on the right activate the legs in and out. Pulling the levers towards you moves the outriggers out or down. Pushing the levers away from you moves the outriggers in or up. Ensuring you have space around the vehicle, pull the lever labelled 1-2 towards you to extend the left-hand outriggers until they are fully extended. Note that the front outriggers are longer than the rear. Do not stop until the front outriggers are fully extended. The MEWP has variable jacking and can operate with only one side of outriggers extended. It will not rotate over the side where the outriggers are in the narrow position. If the MEWP is used in a narrow space, it can be used without the outriggers extended, but slew rotation is reduced. After you have positioned your outrigger pads correctly, using the four levers for outrigger movements up and down, lower the front outriggers to the floor. Then lower the rear outriggers. Continue to activate the outrigger levers until the unit is level and the green outrigger light is on. The light circled will illuminate when all four outriggers have taken the weight of the MEWP and the wheels are off the floor. Below the outrigger levers is the level indicator. Walk around the unit and check that all four outrigger feet are placed onto an outrigger pad. Switch the key switch selector to the ground controls position. Pushing the emergency stop will cut out the engine and functions will stop. This is for emergency use only or pre-use checks only. Rotating it and pulling it towards you gently will release it. Hold the engine start selector in the start position until the engine starts. Allow a moment for the machine to boot up. If you didn't stop the engine, no need to touch the engine start switch. There are four levers located next to the ground control station. Once you are happy that there are no overhead obstructions, using the jib boom lever, which is the second from the left, lift it upwards to raise the jib boom. The jib boom must be raised upwards first to remove it from the boom rest and to avoid any impact with the bumper. Then raise the main boom lever to lift the main boom. This function is dual function, 
Continue to lift the main boom until it reaches max angle. Keeping hold of the main boom lever once it reaches max angle will then enable the main boom to extend. Continue to extend until it reaches the desired position. Lowering the lever will retract this boom. Activating this lever again or keeping hold of the lever will then lower this boom. Lowering the jib boom lever will lower the jib boom. Extension of the jib boom should only be used when elevated. Lifting this lever up will extend the jib out. Pulling the lever down will retract the jib boom back in. The final lever on the far right will rotate or slew the machine. Up is clockwise and down is counterclockwise. Use this selector switch if you wish to rotate the basket left or right. Holding it left will rotate the basket clockwise. Holding it right will rotate the basket counterclockwise. Holding this selector to the stop position will stop the engine. Functions will not work without the engine running. Ensure the engine is started within 30 minutes of it being turned off. Once the engine is restarted, wait a few seconds for the RPM to increase before touching the levers. The emergency stop is for emergency use or pre-use checks only. If used, rotate and pull gently to release. Switch the key switch at the ground control station to the platform position. This is the position on the far left. Using three points of contact, access the cage and cage controls. Attach your harness to the harness point provided and wear any PPE relevant or required for the job you are doing. If the engine is not running, hold the start switch to the start position. Checking there are no overhead obstructions. Push the jib boom lever away from you to lift the jib boom. Push the main boom lever away from you to lift the main boom. Once the main boom reaches maximum position, pushing the main boom lever again or keeping hold of the main boom lever will extend the main boom section. Pull this lever towards you to retract the lower boom. Once retracted all the way, keep hold of or reactivate this lever again to lower the main boom. Pull this lever towards you to lower the jib boom. The jib boom should only be lowered if it is not extended. Lowering this without it retracted may cause impact to the bumper. Pushing this lever away will extend the jib boom. Pull this lever towards you to retract the jib boom. Pushing this lever away from you will rotate the machine clockwise. Pulling this lever towards you will rotate the machine counterclockwise. Pushing this toggle switch left will rotate the basket clockwise and pushing it right will rotate the basket counterclockwise. Pushing this toggle switch to the stop position will stop the engine. Pushing the emergency stop will stop the engine and functions will not work. This is for emergency or pre-use checks only. Rotating this to the right and gently pulling towards you will release the emergency stop button. Before stowing the machine, ensure that the green center line position light is lit. Rotate the machine using the lever on the far right hand side to reach the desired center line position. Once the boom is firmly in the boom rest behind the cab and to the rear of the machine, using the four outrigger levers on the passenger side, Push the levers away from you to retract the outriggers and lower the machine to the floor. Where possible, let the back wheels touch the ground first. Using the two levers to the right, retract the outriggers until they are fully retracted. If they are not fully retracted inwards or upwards, a red warning may appear in the cab when the clutch pedal is pressed. 
Pack away any outrigger pads before leaving site.